okay now we are in our step 10 we are going to enable hsrp in both of the distribution switches and we are going to do the load balancing here so for any type of failure like spf single point of failure some vlan will be primary in distribution switch one the other vlan will be primary in distribution switch two so for any type of failure if one switch goes down the other switch will take over and become the primary and we are going to enable the preempt so what preempt does once there is a failover if that switch goes down this switch become the primary for the whole network all the down leg but with the preempt when the other switch comes back like if we replace the box then this switch again will go back to secondary the standby and the new box will be primary again with the configuration preempt also the benefit of redundant is in distribution switch 1 VLAN 10 20 50 will be the primary or the active that means see the traffic for VLAN 10 traffic for VLAN 20 here as well and here as well all this traffic will hit up to the distribution switch 1 first and by any chance if the distribution switch 1 is failed to forward the traffic or if there is any failover suppose the box is broken the link is broken then it will go to the distribution switch 2 because 10 20 50 is the secondary in distribution switch 2 same way since 30 and 40 vlan is active here so for any traffic for vlan 30 and 40 it will come to the distribution switch 2 first and then for same reason if there is any failover fail to forward the traffic then the traffic will be moved towards distribution switch 1 this is the benefit of the redundancy now the question is why we are going to configure hsrp here because hsrp is the protocol that is used for inter vlan routing there could be a lot of protocols actually but hsrp is the most popular and then we are going to do the load balancing through hsrp it provides redundancy load balancing so for any type of failover for links devices router and switches it provides the load balancing the redundancy now think about that this is a big network right so if there's any failure it is not possible to configure them manually every time right hsrp automatically provides the redundancy but again there is four protocols that can be used fsrp which is first of redundancy protocol and then hsrp hot standby routing protocol vrp virtual routing redundancy protocol and then glbp but hsrp and glbp is the cisco proprietary owned by cisco but anyway this is the main protocol fsrp and it has four classes this is three of them with that being said let's start doing that so we are going to implement the hsrp in distribution switch one vlan 10 20 50 will be the primary or the active 30 and 40 will be standby here in distribution switch 2 30 and 40 will be active and 10 20 50 will be standby now let's configure that now from the aspect of configuration it's pretty simple we have to deploy the hsrp in every vlan we have to use a virtual ip address we are going to use one of the ip address from the end which is 254 for every vlan we need a group number out of 0 to 255 and then we need two gateways for the hsrp configuration one will be the virtual gateway and then the actual gateway for individual VLANs. Like here, we are saying a standby one. One is the group number and IP is 10.10.10.254. This is our virtual gateway. Now, when the traffic comes from this VLAN 10, it will go to the virtual gateway first here to the 10.10.10.254. And then from that virtual gateway based on the priority value and the active ip the virtual gateway forwards the traffic towards that higher prioritized or active ip here in this case we are making the vlan 10 primary in the distribution switch 1 with the higher priority value of 110 so the virtual gateway which is dot 254 will forward the traffic to the actual gateway of the vlan 10 and what is the actual gateway the actual gateway for vlan 10 that we configured initially for the vlan configuration which is 10.10.10.1 that we have configured during the vlan configuration and then we are going to put some priority value out of 0 to 255 by default it is 100 we are going to put 110 in a state so we're going to say standby one priority 110 standby one preempt this is the preempt as i mentioned earlier i guess there is a mistake in this script let me fix that okay. 
So for 20, that would be 20, 20, 20 to 54. Priority is 110. Stand by one preempt. And then for VLAN 50, it's the same 50, 50, 50 to 54. Priority is 110. Preempt. These three VLAN are the primary in distribution switch one. VLAN 30 and 40 will be the standby in distribution switch one. And if you can see the priority value is by default 100 here for 20 it is 110 for 50 that is 110 also for 10 that is 110 but for 30 and 40 that is 100 that means it is the standby same way in distribution switch to 30 40 will be the primary if you notice the priority value is 110 and the standby ip is 30 30 30 254 vlan 40 as well 40 40 40 254 and the priority is 110 and if you notice here the 10 20 50 the priority value is 100 everywhere that means 10 20 50 is the standby in distribution switch 2 let's configure that Okay, if you notice here, they all are local 10, 20, 40, 50. Mm -hmm, I think I missed one. What happened to 30? Let's configure the villain 30 again. Okay, now it looks fine. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. They all are local and a standby is unknown. As I said, I have to configure in distribution switch 2 as well. Now, as I said, in distribution switch 2, 30 and 40 will be the primary and 10, 20, 50 will be the secondary. We say show a standby brief. If we run the same command in distribution switch one, let's see what we see. Let's take a picture and analyze it. These are the interface. We have VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and this is the group number. Now we have set standby one in every VLAN. That is why it is all within one group. P stands for preemption, and then this is the priority value, and then this is a state that shows the actual state in this device. What is standby and what is active. And in the active tab, we have local and there is some IP address. The active tab shows all the active IPs for individual VLANs. For example, we have 30, 30, 32, 40, 40, 42. Now these are the active IPs for VLAN 30 and 40 that is configured in the remote device here. And we also see local. Now for the VLANs, those are locally active. It's not going to show the IP address instead it's going to show as local here again the standby tab only shows the standby ips and vlan those are locally standby it is going to say as local it's not going to show us any ip but we know for vlan 30 and 40 the standby will be 30.1 and 40.1 and the same thing here as well interface group priority and p we know all this we have discussed it here let's start from the active tab the active tab again shows all the active ips for individual vlans we know that for vlan 10 20 and 50 these are the active ips 10.1 20.1 and 50.1 for vlan 30 and 40 we know that that is 
30.2 and 40.2 we can see here but it is locally active that is why it is not showing us the IP and instead it is showing as local same thing here the IPs those are locally standby it is not going to show us instead it is showing as local but we know the standby for VLAN 10 will be 10.2 20.2 for VLAN 20 and 50.2 for VLAN 50 it is not showing it is showing as local but for VLAN 30 and 40 if you notice these are the standby IP 30.1 and 40.1 these are the standby IPs for VLAN 30 and 40 that is configured in the distribution switch 1 it's not local that's why it is showing the IPs now we are going to deploy the track IP for load balancing for the interfaces that is connecting to the core switches we have already configured the load balancing up to our distribution layer switches from here to here from all this part we have all load balancing here but to enable load balancing for these ether channels and these links we are enabling another load balancing track IP there could be two protocols either track IP or we have IP SLA but we have chosen to deploy the track IP here if any link is failure like if this ether channel breaks by any chance if this link break as well by any chance for the VLAN 10 20 50 that we made primary here traffic will be forwarded to the distribution switch 2 by reducing 15 from the priority value so distribution switch will be primary for, for every VLAN 10 20 30 40 and 50 now we have already done that with HSRP but truck IP is an additional load balancing that is going to provide to our distribution now here again it is not necessary but in production network truck IP is a common protocol for load balance that is we are going to do it here in terms of deployment it's very easy couple of commands truck 1 interface po2 line protocol one is a number we have selected nothing else interface po2 what is interface po2 that is here ether channel 2 we know that we also call it port channel 2 and then line protocol this is the line protocol now we have to say that only in the active VLAN for distribution switch 1 we have 10 20 50 as the active and for distribution switch 2 we have 30 40 is the active so we are in the distribution switch 1 right now so we are only going to mention 10 20 and 50 that is exactly here interface VLAN 10 standby 1 truck 1 decrement 15 what I'm saying that when we were configuring the HSRP we set the priority value 110 now I'm saying hey if anything happened to the distribution switch 1 for VLAN 10 please decrease 15 from here so that distribution switch 2 this switch 2 can become the primary and take over the role of distribution switch 1 all traffic for VLAN 10 should be forwarded to distribution switch 2 now again we have done that with the HSRP load balancing this is an extra layer of load balancing very simple we are going to say the same for VLAN 20 interface VLAN 20 standby 1 track 1 decrement 15 interface VLAN 50 standby 1 track 1 decrement 15 and for distribution switch 2 we are going to say the same thing track 1 interface PO2 line protocol we are deploying that here this is layer 3 ether channel 2 which is interface PO2 interface VLAN 30 standby 1 track 1 decrement 15 interface VLAN 40 standby 1 track 1 decrement 15 and to check it we can say show track one okay let's configure that I'm in the distribution switch one I think I have not configured the villain 50 yet Now I can see line protocol is up track by HSRP VLAN 10 20 50 and the number is same for all VLAN. Now I'm going to go to the distribution switch 2. Now we are doing it here. If we notice show track 1 see line protocol is up and track by VLAN 30 and 40 it is tracking for VLAN 30 and 40 that is all for this unit I'll see you in my next step